Okay, let's do a rundown of Fuji lenses. Right now I have 13 in front of me. These are mine. I've got a few copies of a few of these because I got them so cheap I need to get rid of them. Which ones are topmost? Making a general recommendation as I got done making another video earlier today. You know, being subjective and projecting your personal likes or dislikes. Now, there are empirical criteria where I can actually say uh, existentially and uh, empirically that, hey, for example, this lens sucks. That's one thing. Making a suggestion to someone else based upon your own personal shooting style or your own budget or whatever it is that you need to shoot most, that's something else. That's a mistake. So we can be right on one thing and right on another thing. Um, you know, saying that something is not a great lens or a very poor value. And secondly, knowing what someone is uh, either uh, shooting mostly or what their budget is. So let's take a look at uh, some uh, recommendations here. And uh, let's see if we can uh, narrow down the pack a little bit. Now the only reason I have the 14mm Fuji... Now, here's the problem with Fuji lenses, and they don't have a problem at all, is that when you've got uh, a pile of exquisite lenses, you know, calling one or two of Fuji's lenses lemons, is a relative term. Uh, the two uh, lenses that I found, and I've tried more than one copy, that are lemons are the 18 millimeter Fuji and the 23. I mean, I wouldn't buy those if I found one at 80% off. That being said, that doesn't mean that they're bad lenses. A lot of people love the 18 millimeter Fuji. However, you find tons of them used. Everybody gets rid of them for a reason. But this is no slant against Fuji. Nikon's got tons of lenses, and there, there's a pile of Nikon lenses that are dogs. Woof, woof, woof. Um, so those are two uh, Fuji lenses that uh, I cannot recommend um, based upon both empirical criteria and otherwise. That's not to say that they produce bad results or they have nasty resolutions. Generally speaking, I do not find them desirable lenses in any way, shape, or form, either subjectively or empirically so, based upon the output of those lenses. Now, the 14mm versus the 16 I've actually named the 16mm not only the lens of the year, so far as my belief, but also the results are absolutely unbelievable. The lens is so incredible it shouldn't exist, the 16mm here. The only reason I have this Fuji 14mm is because I got it so ridiculously cheap. It's only a hair wider that I had to buy it. I, I thought someone might have had temporary insanity when I saw this lens so incredibly cheap. I've uh, tested out two different copies, so it's not just this lens. I would not buy the 14mm Fuji. No way, no, no how. Now, if you go to the Flickr page and take a look at the 14mm, you'll see a lot of exquisite results. The point being is, when I have something that's 16mm versus 14, do you really need two more millimeters in field of view between the 14 and the 16? The point being is that to all things being equal and cost being irrelevant, which cost is never irrelevant, the 16mm is 10 light years above and beyond, the 16mm, excuse me, 16mm uh, is 10 light years above and beyond the 14mm. I would not purchase the 14mm either at full cost, nor can I make a general, you know, high recommendation on the 14mm. That's not to say it has bad output or bad results, so... That's the 16 versus the 14. So let me move the 14 back here. Let's move the 16 over here. Let's take a look at these other two. You know, I always get questions about these two. The new 35mm F2 with a weather-resistant sealing, which really doesn't mean a damn thing. There's no such thing, ultimately, as a weather-sealed camera lens when it comes to um, a pervasive weather. Short-term invasive. Okay, they've got a few rubber O-rings. They're still really not weather sealed against a fungus mold and uh, invasive uh, humidity invasion. They're really not. Cameras and lenses have far too many uh, orifices on them for uh, pervasive humidity to get in. So this is not a recommendation. I see a lot of people making a recommendation of the 35mm f2 over that of the 1.4 simply based upon weather sealing. And people that say that sort of stuff, that, well they're idiots. They really are. Now the 35mm f1.4 undoubtedly it's a noisy lens too. The 35mm f1.4 is extremely noisy. It's also rather cheap. It's one of early, uh, Fuji's earliest lenses. Now there is no comparing the 35mm at f2 this lens with the 35mm f1.4. You have different depth of field. If that is what you're going for, the 35mm f1.4 is a really nice lens. It is slow autofocus and it is noisy as hell. You just type in 35mm f1.4 uh, aperture chatter. Um, 
If you've ever used this lens, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that's not really an issue to me. I don't care. I own both. The only reason I got the 1.4 is because I got it really cheap. But I, you know, I first tested it. I thought it was exquisite. I knew I wanted the lens, but the 35mm f2 is a divine little Fuji lens. It's incredibly compact. has better resolution. It's actually a better lens. Faster autofocus, better resolution, better color saturation than that of the 1.4. Both of them are fine. The 35mm f2, also a new price between the two, not with the sale with standing that's going on right now, is actually a really, really cheap lens, cheap in price. So the recommendation on those is both are split. If you really want that f1.4 aperture, then go for it. But realize the autofocus on the 1.4 is rather slow, and it is a noisy lens. I mean, it, it's noisy. It's really noisy. But that's no big deal. Some people are really anal about everything, and they piss and moan about everything. I'm kind of guilty of that myself sometimes. Uh, <laughs> the 18 to 135. I now I've got a couple of these lenses. The only reason I got a second one is because I got it so cheap. I've uh, found out, and I just recently made a video on this one, that uh, one well, of my first observations of this lens, I don't know if I had a bad copy, were not so hot. Grabbing a second one. First one must have had an issue. I didn't mess around with the 18 to 135 enough, or I didn't give it enough consideration. I've actually found this, and usually super zoom lenses suck in general. It doesn't matter if they're made by Nikon or Canon, they suck. But knowing Fuji and how incredible the lenses are, I, I should have known better. And uh, the 18 to 135 is actually the best super zoom lens that I've ever used. Um, there have been a lot of people who have actually said if you just had one lens for travel, and I never recommend a super zoom to, to haul with you unless weight is just a super extreme consideration. You're going to be backpacking, and one camera and one lens is the absolute maximum you're going to take, yeah. The, one, the 18 to 135 is an incredible lens. Really, really is the best super zoom lens that I've ever used. And my God, I've used a lot of them, a lot. Now the 85 millimeter equivalent, and this is an expensive a little lens too, is worth every bit of what it costs. The 56 millimeter f 1.2, um, exquisite portraiture lens. Exquisite for a lot of stuff, really. Um, can I say it's awfully expensive at $1,000? It certainly is. Is it worth it? Generally speaking, yes. I just got done making a video about what you can rationalize and what you can justify. If you're going to be using it for your work and you can write it off on your taxes, hey, who cares? It doesn't cost anything. If you can rationalize it as a cost expenditure where it's going to pay back in dividends based upon you using it for your work to make work that you're going to get paid for, then it's an absolute necessity. So that's the 56mm f1.2. It is exquisite. It is lovely. As I've said a thousand times, if not more than a thousand times, the second most important lens to own, doesn't matter whether it's Fuji, Nikon, or Canon, is a wide zoom. The 10 to 24 fixed aperture f4, no less, is an excellent lens. Rather expensive. Not far from a thousand dollars. Expensive lens worth every bit of what it costs. You hardly ever find a used one for very good valid reasons because nobody wants to get rid of it. The 10 to 24 is top recommendation. Wide zoom is incredibly useful. At many times, I've actually considered a wide zoom the most important lens that I've actually got if I'm walking around. Love a wide zoom. Okay, this is 16 millimeter that I've already talked about. The 60 millimeter macro. Let's actually do a comparison between it and the 56. And here's something that people don't know. Well, obviously this. 60 millimeters, an old lens, and it's kind of noisy, and it's slow autofocus. And portraiture, that doesn't really matter for a whole hell of beans. I mean, your portrait, uh, your model, or uh, your bride are under your control, hopefully so. And, you know, they're generally not moving like a, a muskrat through the woods. We're not talking about wildlife portraiture here. I guess there could be a wild woman, and they could be moving fast, right? The 60 millimeter f2.4 versus the 56 millimeter f1.2. Ooh, f2.4 versus f2.4. Hmm, quite a difference there. There certainly is. However, the 60 millimeter f2.4 not only does macro, while at not one-to-one -one reproduction rate, is a better portraiture lens <laughs> at f2.4, f2.8 than the 56 millimeter is at f. 2.4 or f2.8. So the both of these lenses shot at f2.8, the 60 millimeter, and this is basically true of any macro lens. It's due to the optical design of a macro lens versus an ultra wide portraiture like I mean, excuse me, an ultra fast portraiture lens like this. The 60 millimeter f2.4 at f2.8 versus the 56 millimeter at f2.8. It's sharper, got better color saturation. <laughs> 
it's actually also got better bokeh at f2.8 than the 56 millimeter does at f2.8. This isn't something people consider. The 16 millimeter f2.4 is an old slow autofocus lens. It is divinely exquisite. The metal lens hood on it is wonderful. Very well built. Uh, pro Fuji's probably going to outdate this lens. We're gonna, they're probably going to reconcile it to the trash sheet and replace it with something that's a lot faster. Since it's one of their old lenses like the 35mm f1.4 is. But this is a better portraiture lens for a whole lot less money. Now certainly I could go down to f2, uh, f1.2. But if you're not concerned about that and you just want an awesome portraiture lens with autofocus for your Fuji, really, really cheap, and eh, say $350, $400 used on eBay, 60mm f2.4. Because it is sharper, better color saturation, better bokeh at f2.8 than the 56mm is at f2.8. Excellent lens. People don't ever talk about this lens, and they should. They figure it's just old. It's like, well, you know, you got to have an f1.2. Oh, really? Really? Do you? Do you, do you really? Do you really, or are you just telling yourself that because people look at lens like this and they go, oh my god, that's so sexy. That's exactly what people do. Okay, 55 to 200. Now I have that next to its expensive cousin that I picked up, and this has been one of the last lenses that I picked up, the 50 to uh, 140 millimeter constant aperture f2.8. It's basically 70 to 200, uh, 2.8 equivalent. I've I had a couple people who had a uh, intellectual hissy fit with me because I've been recommending this lens and it is incredible. The 55 uh, millimeter to 200 and this lens is pretty damn cheap too, cheap in price meaning. Had a hissy fit with me because I've been recommending this lens for a long time, and I recently picked up this lens. And people are like, "Why did you buy that lens? You know, why did you buy that? You've been recommending the 55 to 200." Okay, hold your horses here. As I've already talked about, between. The 16 to 55 and the 18 to 55. The 1655 has a few more attributes for a whole lot more money that the 18 to 55 does not have. And the exact same scenario applies between these two lenses. You're talking about almost three times the price for this lens versus the 55 to 200. Okay? Three times as much. What am I getting for that? Getting better bokeh, f2.8. Getting faster autofocus, getting better uh, optical image stabilization, four stops of optical image stabilization. Is it worth the $1,700 that it costs? I mean, is it really worth that? Well, I just got done making a video about that. You can either rationalize it, or you can justify it, or you can say, I've been saving my pennies and I'm treating myself. If it's a business expenditure and you need those few extra attributes, you say, both of these are basically the same lens. You get a few more attributes here that you don't with 55-200. Is it worth three times the money? Well, that's a question that you have to ask yourself. Can you write it off on your taxes? Are you going to be using it professionally where it's going to pay for itself almost instantly? Or is it something that you say, well, I'm going to treat myself and save my pennies. I know it's a lot more expensive, but I really, really want it, and that's what I'm going to get. That's also perfectly logical and valid. So the hissy fit sort of say tete tete -tet that I've had with a couple people when I recently announced that I got the 50, uh, 50 uh, millimeter f1 uh, 40 f2.8 like wow well, you've been recommending the 55 to 2 yes and I'm not going to take this on a traveling trip with me this has a specific purpose it is a 70 to 200 2.8 equivalent lens designed for portraiture uh, wildlife sports action constant aperture better bokeh a little better optical image stabilization. It's weather seal, which it doesn't mean a damn thing. Weather sealing, like I said, does not really mean a damn thing. It's got a few rubber O-ring gaskets in it. Neither one of them in a deluge. You can't take either one of these lenses, any of these lenses, out in a deluge and expect them to survive scot-free without fungus or mold or you know invasive troubles. Because people think, wow, well, ah, my lens is weather sealed. It's going to take it. No, it's not. You can read the fine print from Nikon, Fuji, or anybody, they're going to tell you, it's like, no, no, it's not what that means. One of the last lenses I have sitting here on the Fuji X-T1 is the 27mm f2.8. Tiny little pancake lens, consider it the tits. Why? Especially if you're packing a camera everywhere you go with you, you can pack it underneath your coat. The slim little camera with this lens attached. Look how slim that is. I love pancake lenses all to death. It's an awesome little lens. It's not that cheap, but it is just wonderful. It is just silk, sex, and sugar. Love it to death. Love pancake lenses. It's uh, basically a 35 millimeter equivalent, basically. And uh, it's an awesome lens. Got a couple of them. 
love the 27 millimeter pancake lens. It's a limited little lens. You know, it's a fixed little prime. Produces excellent images. It's uh, stealthy, compact, a little stub. It's no much bigger than a body cap. A little bit bigger than a body cap. But uh, that's the rundown of uh, 13 Fuji lenses. And uh, I said I've tested every Fuji lens. And if you don't see it here, I have tested it, and I didn't buy it for valid reasons. I do not want the 100 to 400 millimeter Fuji at any price. I used that lens. I was not overtly impressed with it, but uh, you know that, that's what I've got. Uh, you know, my Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter, and 400 millimeter of 2.8, and 300 millimeter. You know, I don't need that. I've got that covered on other bases. But even if I didn't. Money not being in that lens is really damn expensive. Don't want the 100 400. Just don't want it at all. And uh, that's not giving Fuji down the road for the lens. I'm not not doing that. Uh, I so said there's two lenses that I really definitely cannot recommend, and that's based upon empirical criteria. One is the 18 millimeter, unquestionably Fuji's worst lens. But Fuji's worst lens needs a basis of comparison. Fuji's worst lens is still a good lens. It's just that's what Fuji's worst lens is. The uh, 18 millimeter. The second one being the 20, uh, the 23 millimeter, and definitely so. Most absolutely, definitely so. Between the 14 and the 16, there's just I don't care if the 14 is two millimeters wider. There's just no way in hell that I'm going to compare the 14 to the 16. 16 is uh, Fuji's best lens. It's unbelievable. It shouldn't exist. It's that good. Angels descended from heaven and created that uh, that uh, lens. There's nothing else of that focal range by anybody, Leica, Zeiss, Canon, or Nikon, that has ever spit out output so incredible as a 16 millimeter Fuji. Unbelievable. So that is the Fuji lens uh, rundown. And if you were to ask me, well, if I could only have. Uh, and this is always the question I get asked. If I could only have four or five of these lenses, what would it be? Well, that's a pretty tough choice. Uh, budget not being an issue. Budget's always an issue for most people. Uh, my answer would be the 16 millimeter, the 10 to 24, the 55 to 200, and, well, you're already going to have the 18 to 55. Everybody needs a mid-range zoom. Everybody needs a wide zoom. You do need a couple primes. Definitely the 16 millimeter. And uh, the 35mm uh, f2 right here. But that's only, what, four lenses? I'd still want a super zoom. And I, I'm not a person that recommends super zooms. I mean, I'm a hardcore fan of prime lenses, but my god, the 18 to 135 Fuji is absolutely incredible. And it's the best super zoom lens that I've ever used. And I recently announced it that a week or so ago. Um, 50, a 6mm f1.2, very expensive portraiture lens. I don't know if you could justify it or rationalize it. I know a lot of people want it for obvious reasons. So, what can I recommend? Say five lenses. Five lenses, 55 to 200. Here we go. The 16mm, oh my god, it's that incredible. The 10 to 24, that's three lenses. Number four would be the uh, 18 to 55. Yeah, that's four lenses right there. And uh, lastly would be uh, one of the 35 millimeters. I wish that could include a 6 lens. If I include a 6 lens, it would be the uh, 18 to 135. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful, educational, and helpful. If you like this, uh, you can always ask for my address and send me a pizza. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. Uh, or you can, you can leave a small, small donation to my crazy butt for being helpful because I want to save you time and I want to save you money because nobody has their hand up my butt I'm not being paid by Fuji or any camera store I'm not hot linking unlike the rest of these YouTube knuckleheads hot linking to a camera store online so I don't get paid no matter what you buy I'm trying to be helpful so I hope it was helpful okay thank you for watching you have a happy 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 joyful day and all that crazy jazz okay bye bye